Recently, I made a reaction to very uniquely Australian photographs and they were enjoyable to see. One thing that was very apparent is that there is a lot of very interesting and unique birds in Australia. So I wanted to learn more about them. Someone recommended this video, it's called Beautiful Photos of 20 Iconic Australian Birds by bird photogra uh, photographer Dwayne Payton. So yeah, I didn't know there was as many as 20 unique uh, Australian birds. The, one of the images that sticks out that I remember is seeing the cockatoo just in the middle of Sydney. I had no idea these like beautiful birds just flew about the cities of Australia. Uh, but yeah, let's learn more. Tell me what your favourite Australian bird is. What's the most unique bird you've ever seen? Let's check it out. G'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you photos of 20 iconic Australian species. I've been really fortunate to photograph hundreds of birds oh. and take thousands of photos, so I thought it would be great if I shared with you photos of 20 iconic species. Most of you have probably heard of these birds or you might have seen them, but it would be great to have a look at them up close and we can appreciate those birds together. If that sounds interesting to you, maybe grab a cuppa and we'll go through these 20 iconic species. So whilst we've got all these birds singing around us, might as well get started on iconic species number one, and that is the splendid fairy wren. This bird is absolutely stunning. I love the it's got colour. Multiple man. shades of blue. It's just got character. It's truly one of the highlights of Australian birds. Mm. These little birds are often in groups with multiple females, and they're bouncing around the ground, and they're a favourite of just about every single person who visits Australia. The splendid fairy wren, however, is an inland bird, so it's not not where I live, and you have to travel some way to find it. I've actually only had one real good session with these birds and that was back in 2012. During that time I managed to get quite a few photos I'm very happy with. This photo here that you can see, this is probably one of my favourites, mm. if you look closely you can see a little flower in the bill of the bird. At the time I took this I just assumed that that flower was for one of his girlfriends, <laughs> but I've later found out that he only offers flowers to females he wants to have an affair with, not the girls <laughs> that he's already got. So I was a little bit disappointed wow. by that. But then in theory, <laughs> the other girls in his group are probably getting flowers from other boys, so it all evens out in the end. <laughs> I don't know why that is such an amazing story. Like, I had no ideas, I had no idea that birds had affairs. That is a cute bird. The colour of it is so unique. Like, obviously, blue is my favourite colour, but to see so many different shades of blue and they're so vibrant and, yeah, so unique as well. The story's great, the name's even better, Splendid Fairy Wren. Girls in his group are probably getting flowers from other Fantastic. boys, so it all evens out in the end. I don't know if you can hear the kookaburras in the background, but it's good timing, because that's one of the iconic species I want to talk about. If you hear this bird, you know, you definitely know what it is as soon as you hear it. A it's sort of all around Australia, it's a great bird to photograph, and I've had the pleasure a number of times. Have this you ever heard that? that? You can see is one of my favourite shots. I happened to be walking down a path and the bird just flew straight in front of me and landed at a tree on my left. I happened to have my camera on my shoulder. I put it down, checked the settings, focused on the bird and took the shot. I really didn't have to do a lot for it. It just fell into my lap and that's what happens sometimes and that's one of the joys of birding. Uh, the camera had to work really hard for the shot because it was ISO 3200, 1 25th of a second. So I really had to push it, not for settings I'd recommend, but I didn't have any light. I had to take the opportunity when it presented itself. It's a fantastic bird, an iconic one that you'll definitely see if you come to Australia. So Australia is often referred to as the land of parrots and for good reason. We've got a lot of colourful parrots. I never knew One that. of the most common and most colourful is the galah. With its beautiful pink and grey feathers, this bird is a real highlight of the Australian bush and it's literally everywhere. It's probably for that reason most people overlook it when it comes to photographing them. Overall, extremely beautiful bird that you'll be guaranteed pink to eyes see as well. you visit. You may not realise that the female actually has that red eye and the male has the black eye. So that's how you can tell the sexes apart. Cool. Following on the parrot theme. Yeah, the only, I didn't know a gala was a p type of parrot. The only way I know of a gala is like the saying flaming gala. I don't know where that originates from. Tell me if you know that. I know it's some sort of slang or famous saying in Australia. But that is, again, man, to see it. I don't think I've ever seen a gala, but it's like so interesting to look the at, especially the colour of it the again. beautiful rainbow lorikeet. We've got a few lorikeets in Australia, but this one is by far the most common, possibly the <laughs> most colourful. With those range of colours, it's easy to see how it's been given the name of rainbow lorikeet. I've had the pleasure of photographing this bird a number of times. 
and as you can see by this headshot you are able to get very close to the species. It can be feeding on flowering plants in your backyard so a great photographic subject and a bird you'll definitely see if you come to the east coast of Australia. I'm always happy to see them. They are very noisy, a beautiful but iconic Australian species. So the next bird belongs to an absolutely incredible family and that's the bowerbird family. You may have heard of them, these birds are the ones that build those amazing those bowers ice. and the males will spend hours and days building these elaborate bowers and then decorating them out the front. The species I've had a lot of time with is the satin bowerbird. It's fairly common on the, on the east coast, southeast of Australia. And this is the bird that collects the blue bottle tops and shells and pebbles and all sorts of things. So sometimes you'll be walking through the bush and you'll see all of this garbage and people might think, oh, it's just rubbish. But it's probably the, this bird's collected all these things for its bower. Uh, the females can be extremely fussy and they'll come and inspect the bower as you can see in this photo and she's checking to see whether it's up to her standard. If it's not, <laughs> he tears it down and starts again but if he does get it right, he gets to breed and he's happy with that. The adult male actually takes six or seven years to develop this amazing satin plumage. The young males are actually green so you'll often see a lot of green birds together and you may just think they're all females but in fact half of them will be juvenile males and the other half are likely to be female. So it does take quite a long time before they get that adult plumage. Mm. An absolutely amazing species that is actually pretty common in a lot of backyards. So if you do visit Australia, you'll likely see a bowbird, which is fantastic. Wow. Okay, so that brings us to the robin family, probably my most favorite group of birds to photograph because they're just so cute and they have so many colors. We've got pink, we've got yellow, we've got flame, just about every single color is covered. The species I'm going to show today is I the red cap like robin, Whoa. mainly because I was just so excited to photograph this bird when I was starting out and I got that opportunity back in 2012 and I still love this photo and it brings back a lot of fond memories and I still love photographing this bird today. The male has the red cap and the red chest and the female is more of a sort of a plain brown with a, a little bit of red on her cap. You can see in this shot the females on the left and the males on the right and they're often seen together out in the bush. So a favourite little bird of mine that I love to photograph. So that oh, that is mad. The robin is the only bird so far that I've seen in the UK. My dad used to like have a few bird feeders and things like that. He used to like, like bringing a lot of birds to the garden and things. There was a lot of interesting ones. I don't really know much about birds. This is actually very enlightening for me, learning not just about what the birds are, but about their story, about how they actually lived their life, basically. I knew of robins. I didn't know you could get them in such vibrant, different colours as well. I've only seen the like the red-breasted robins, uh, which are cute in themselves, but those ones are just magnificent, honestly. Brings us to the Australian Tell magpie. Tell me if you've seen them. It has one of the most beautiful songs you'll hear in the Australian bush. I really do enjoy hearing it when I'm out and about. I'm fortunate that they're almost everywhere in Australia. Wherever you go, you'll definitely find a magpie. They're often in little groups, they're a joy to see and a joy to photograph. I was fortunate that I used to have a bird visit my backyard and I and enabled me to get a few nice shots of the species, which I'm still very happy with. The Australian magpie, magpie really is one of those iconic species. Mm. The Tell next me if you've bird ever been is the beautiful and elegant black swan. Some people may not realise that it actually breeds in Australia and is endemic. It's actually been introduced to a lot of countries around the world. I've had the pleasure of photographing it a number of times. And it really is a highlight any time I get that opportunity. It is actually quite a big bird if you're not aware. I took these shots Such which a has long a little bit of habitat in the background and it gives you a sense of where this bird is and that's why I like these shots. Mm. So that brings us on to Australia's nice largest beak, bird of one. prey and that's the mighty wedge-tailed eagle. This really is a giant in the sky and a familiar scene in the outback of Australia. I've actually only had the opportunity to photograph this bird once so I would love another opportunity. I happened to be driving in the outback and noticed two birds on roadkill, which is often how you'll see them. Mm. One of them flew off, but the other one just flew into a tree nearby. So I've stopped the car, I've hopped out and hand held and I've just taken a few shots of this bird in the tree, as you can see. And I was really happy to actually finally get some shots of this species. Most of the time you see them hovering around in the oh, sky with their giant wing spread and that wedge tail, which gives them their name. Mm. An amazing bird and one I really want better shots of. The next iconic species I never knew is there was the Australian eagles pelican. In Australia. I'm pretty sure everyone's heard of this bird. It's got the enormous bill and it's a giant bird flying around. I really wanted to photograph this bird when I first started out. In Australia, recreational fishing is quite popular and they have filleting tables where the fishermen fillet the fish and the pelicans have figured this out and they come for a free feed. Mm -hmm. So it made for the perfect opportunity to get some photos. So I stood nearby one of these filleting tables and I waited till the birds were flying in and I just had my camera, my 405.6, and I was photographing these birds as they were flying in. 
I was very happy with this shot that I got with the clouds in the background, the pose, and it's well lit, and it really captures the. This guy's a great photographer, man. This brings us to the amazing red-necked avocet. This is a shorebird, and it's one of my favourite species to photograph and I had so much fun doing it. I had wanted to photograph this bird as soon as I saw it in the books, and it took me a few years to get that opportunity, but when I did, I spent hours and hours laying down in the mud photographing this bird. One morning, everything went to plan. I had perfect conditions, and I was able to get some of the most favorite shots of this bird. It's absolutely unique in the way that its bill is upturned and it sifts through the water. It's got that beautiful head, those long legs. It's an extremely elegant bird that's a joy to see if you do come to Australia. Australia definitely has the most unique birds I've ever seen, man. Tell me if you think that's the case. Do you know of any interesting birds from other places that kind of, or any country that could match Australia for interesting, unique birds? These are like the most beautiful things. It's all the vibrant colours. The interesting thing for me, I never knew there was so many or so much variation in the colours of eyes of birds. That brings us to the soft so many different ones here. It could possibly be the most iconic Australian bird with that big yellow crest. Mm. It is actually a really big bird. And believe it or not, I do not have a photo I'm happy with. I've got a couple, but they don't have their crest up, which is what this species is all about. So even though it's really common, I've just struggled to get a good shot. And that's sometimes just the way it is. But it gives me something to focus on in the future. And hopefully one day I can share that with you photographing this beautiful species. Mm. It may have the most annoying bird call there is. It's, it's like a massive screech and it's not pleasant at all. All right, next up is the little willy wagtail. I'm pretty sure every single person in Australia has seen this bird. It is have literally everywhere. It's extremely friendly and you'll see it bouncing around on the ground and on fence posts, clotheslines. Pretty much wherever you go, this bird will be chirping away and its tail wagging. So it's a favourite of many a cool people, tail. it's a favourite of mine. It's only a little black and white bird, but it's full of character, full of attitude, and it's a great bird to photograph. It's actually one of the very first birds I photographed just because of how common it is. And I still photograph it today, and I've got plenty of them here on the property to enjoy. Mm. So if you do come to Australia, you'll be guaranteed to see the little willy wagtail. So that brings us on to the bird that's often referred to as a bin chicken, a tip turkey, or a dumpster diver. It's <laughs> definitely not a seagull. This bird is an Australian white ibis. This bird is in a lot of big cities and you'll often see it with its head in a rubbish bin cleaning up all the human waste. It does actually occur out in the wild and I was happy to get some photos of this in its natural habitat. It's arguably Australia's ugliest bird. It's definitely only one the mother would love, that's for sure. <laughs> well, there's a little fantail here. But I'm still happy to photograph any bird even if it is this ugly. So that brings us to the Major Mitchell Cockatoo, one of my favourite parrots. Whoa, I had the joy of photographing this bird star. actually last year, and I got this shot which I'm extremely happy with. Major it's also Mitchell called Scott. a pink cockatoo, and for good reason. You can see it's sort of pink colours, and if you even look under the wing, it's got amazing sort of pinky orange colours. Mm. And that crest is the key. With a lot of these cockatoos, they have the most amazing crest, and this bird shows off when it lands. It puts its crest up and it has those amazing colours. So ideally, when you take photos of the species, that's what you want, but you have a very narrow window to do it. So I was happy to get a few shots. If you want to see this bird, you will have to travel a fair way inland to see it, because it's definitely not a common species. Mm. I think so that's that my favorite so far, man. Probably Rocking. one of Australia's most recognized birds. I believe it's on our coat of arms. It's a mm. large flightless bird, and you can probably see footage of it running madly across the desert. So it is an inland species, and you do have to travel to, to find it. I was fortunate to see it a number of times when I've gone inland and I've got a couple of shots. I would like more, but these shots that I'm showing were taken in its natural habitat on open plains where you can see it out and about. I would love some shots of it with its young because the male look after all the young. The young are very cute and stripy, so one day I need to get some photos of some young emus. So that brings us to another parrot, and this one's called the Gang Gang Cockatoo. You've probably seen a few photos of this species as it is a favorite of many photographers. The male is the one with the red head and it has that most amazing crest and it just looks really cool. It's also got an amazing call and you'll hear it. It sounds like a creaky barn door. So you often hear them before you see them or you'll hear them feeding in the treetops as you're walking around. Fortunately, I've managed to get a few photos of the species when they were feeding on an introduced hawthorn tree a few years ago. The female doesn't have the red head of the male and she's sort of a dark gray. 
I was actually pleasantly surprised when I photographed this bird to see just how much colour it has mm. on its chest. So much detail. And it's often when you photograph birds up close you get quite intimate with them and you notice things that you don't notice from afar. So I hope you can see all the colour on this female's chest. Just admire the beauty of this bird. It's definitely a favourite of mine and if you do visit Australia I highly recommend trying to find this bird. Yeah, you mentioned like the call there. Someone mentioned that in one of the previous videos that they get woken up by different types of birds. What is the most annoying sound from any of the birds? Do you get woken up by these birds? And I mean, this video has actually shown me I never really did much research into birds before, but I can see why people go bird, wa bird watching and things like that. I guess maybe where I came from, you only really see pigeons and like just generic birds that are not so interesting. Seeing things like this would be quite an exciting thing to see up close. I All think. right, that brings us to the tawny frogmouth. It's often referred to as an owl by most people, um, but it is a frogmouth. It's fairly common in a lot of backyards, and it's well known because when it perches on a branch, it often looks like a stick. Unfortunately, I don't have a photo of it imitating a branch, but you can see here they're a fantastic looking bird. They've got beautiful big eyes. And they're often in groups of two or three. It's always nice when you come across these birds. I would love more shots of this species as the photos I have aren't very good, but it's an iconic species nonetheless, and I look forward to photographing it again in the future. That brings us on to the honey eater family. It's a large group of birds in Australia as we have a ton of flowering plants from eucalypts and grevilleas that produces a lot of nectar, so we have a lot of birds that feed on the nectar. The honey eater that I wanna focus on today is the regent honey eater. It's the bird that adorns this cat that I have. The reason I wanna talk about it is it's critically endangered. They believe mm. its numbers are as low as 500 or lower, mm. So it needs all the help it can get. It's a beautiful bird that is pretty hard to see. I got really lucky with this bird that turned up on the coast, a single bird in a tree in suburbia. So as you can imagine, I raced down and got some shots. Oh. Unfortunately, a lot of its habitat has been destroyed and that's why it's struggling. On a positive note, there's lots of groups doing a lot of good work, planting trees and trying to care for the species. Mm, that's a shame. All right, that brings us to the Hopefully last they bird. Can save it. And unfortunately, this bird's iconic for all the wrong reasons. It's probably Australia's most hated bird, and that is the masked lapwing. This bird terrorises people all around Australia. Unfortunately, it lays its eggs in the very silly places. It lays them on median strips and out the front of people's yards, and it defends its nest and its young with absolute vigour. It dive bombs, and it has these big spurs that it attacks people with, and they make a really loud noise. Of interest, this bird looks slightly different the further north you go. So in Darwin, I took this shot, it's got really large wattles, mm. but down in the southeast, it has much smaller wattles. So depending on where you go in Australia, is. the bird will look slightly different. Mm. Well, that brings us to the end of these 20 iconic Australian species. Man, that was so entertaining, so enlightening, so interesting to see all these different birds. Tell me if you've ever been attacked by a masked lapwing, uh, if it's ever had to defend itself against you. So the thing is, like as I mentioned, it's such a large variety of different birds, different sizes, different colours, different shapes of like the beak and bill and things like that. I love it, man. It's so great. I'm sure there's ones that are, I'm sure there's Australian birds that were not on this list that are also popular. This is only 20. So tell me what your favourite from this list is. Tell me if there's any other interesting birds from Australia that were not on this list as well. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.